this episode of the Who Am I series, we're going to be discussing four Jane and John Doe cases in Idaho. The first case we're going to be covering is that of the Lewiston John Doe. The Lewiston John Doe was found on September 22, 1989 in Lewiston, Idaho. The partial remains were completely skeletonized. The time of death is estimated to be less than 10 years prior to discovery, but the exact time is unknown. The cause of death is also unknown, however, foul play may be a factor. Cemetery workers began digging a hole for a plot on a piece of land that was supposed to be unoccupied. After digging two feet deep, they discovered human bones buried without a casket. At first, they suspect that they had discovered the bones of a person previously buried at the cemetery legitimately. However, it was noted that a change in the law in the 1960s led to the requirement that all deceased subjects be buried in a vault or casket. Also, the remains have been buried in a north-south direction, while other plots in the cemetery are oriented in an east-west direction. Finally, the relatively young age of the remains at the time of discovery made it nearly impossible for the man to have escaped cemetery record keeping. The remains were hidden in such a way that they likely wouldn't have been found had grave diggers not discovered the bones. The Lewiston John Doe was a white male who's estimated to have been between 24 to 26 years old and to have stood 5 foot 8 inches tall. Investigators were unable to determine his weight, eye, or hair color. Notably, the size and shape of his bones indicate that he may have performed heavy lifting during his lifetime, possibly as a profession or a hobby. Dental records are available. John Doe's dental imaging was entered into a database and cross-checked with missing persons cases, but this failed to provide a match. It's unclear whether the DNA sample taken from the remains was sufficient for profiling. No clothing or personal items were found with the remains. The remains were buried in an unmarked and shallow grave at the Normal Hill Cemetery in Lewiston, Nez Perce County, Idaho. Due to the site's proximity to the Lewiston Civic Theater, the remains were originally speculated to be those of Stephen Pearsall, who disappeared in 1982. He was last seen at the Lewiston Civic Theater. However, when authorities compared dental records of the two men, they did not match. This murder might be connected to the Lewis Clark Valley murders, which are a cluster of unsolved murders and disappearances that occurred in the Lewiston Clarkston metropolitan area between 1979 and 1982. Perhaps 1982 was not the end of the serial killer's reign of terror. If you have any information about this case, please contact local authorities. The second case we're going to be covering is that of the Snake River John Doe. The Snake River John Doe was found on June 26, 1982 in Nez Perce County, Idaho. The remains were unrecognizable due to decomposition. Based on the condition of the remains, he had likely been killed two to three weeks prior to discovery. The cause of death was homicide by gunshot. He was shot once in the left shoulder and once in the neck. Forensic testing indicated that he had been shot with a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson 36 Centennial model. This particular weapon has not been manufactured since 1967. The Snake River John Doe was a white or Hispanic male who's estimated to have been between 13 to 22 years old, although it's believed that he was closer to 18 to 20 years old. He stood about 5 foot 11 inches tall and weighed somewhere between 145 and 160 pounds. 
Investigators were unable to determine his eye color, but stated that he had straight dark brown or black hair that was three to four inches long. He had a scar on his right ankle, which was about two inches in length. Both palms of his hands had corns or calluses, possibly suggesting that he was a manual laborer. He had excellent dental hygiene with no evidence of treatment or cavities. His DNA is available. John Doe was found wearing designer Britannia jeans, which were over blue California Sun swim trunks with red and white stripes down the sides, white socks with blue and red stripes near the top, and size small blue bikini style men's briefs. The remains were recovered from the Idaho side of the Snake River. The site is near the mouth of the Grand Ronde River and is approximately 25 miles south of Lewiston, Idaho. It's been theorized that the prior case is related to this one, since both victims had similar physical appearances, were found close to one another, and their time of death occurred within five years of each other. This is doubtful, however, since the Snake River flows north into Lewiston, which suggests that this person is most likely not from Lewiston. Locals speculate that John Doe might be a migrant farm worker from another country, although there are no farming communities close by. It is unknown whether he originally ended up in the river in Oregon, Washington, or Idaho. If you have any information about this case, please contact local authorities. The next case we're going to be discussing is that of William L. Toomey. William L. Toomey was found on December 4, 1982 in Boise, Idaho. He died minutes prior to his discovery, so his face was recognizable. The cause of death was suicide by cyanide poisoning. William L. Toomey was a white male who's estimated to have been between 35 to 45 years old. He stood six feet tall and weighed 175 pounds. Investigators stated that his eyes were gray with hints of brown and that he had wavy blonde but graying hair that was possibly sun bleached. His hair was styled and his face was clean shaven. He was observed as being well groomed. He had a tanned complexion. Based on his complexion, it's believed that he came from California, Arizona, or New Mexico. It's unknown whether his dental records and DNA are available, but his fingerprints are. John Doe was dressed in Western attire and was found wearing a green, long-sleeved casual shirt, blue jeans, a belt that was brown leather with a large white metal buckle displaying a Mexican 100 peso coin in the center. This belt buckle was traced to a gift shop in Arizona. He was also wearing cowboy boots and was described as being fashionably dressed. He was also found wearing a couple of pieces of jewelry, including a Seiko wristwatch, and a nickel silver western style string tie or bolo with a turquoise stone in the center. P. White was stamped on the back, which is presumed to be the name of the artist behind its creation. He also had on his person $1,900 in cash and a typewritten suicide note, which he signed with the alias W.M. L. Toomey. The note detailed the man's wishes for the money he carried to pay for his funeral and cremation. The remaining funds would be donated to the church. His body was discovered lying dead across a pew's kneeler at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Boise, Idaho. He was observed at the pew shortly before his death, prior to the start of the confession service at about 4 p.m. The alias used by John Doe was taken from a company which manufactured clothing for priests and nuns. There is speculation that he may have been involved in the murders of two priests from Odessa, Texas and Yuma, Arizona, but no evidence has been uncovered to support this theory. 
If you have any information about this case, please contact local authorities. The final case we're going to be covering in this episode is that of the Oneida County Jane Doe. The Oneida County Jane Doe was found on October 26, 1986, near Mallet, Idaho. The only remains recovered were a partial skull, which included teeth. However, her lower jaw was not present. The exact time since death is unknown, but is estimated to be around 1978. The cause of death was homicide by beating. It appeared that she was struck on the side of the head repeatedly with a blunt object. The Oneida County Jane Doe was most likely a female who was either black or black with white admixture. She's estimated to have been between 12 to 16 years old, although she may have been in her early 20s or older. Investigators were unable to determine her height, weight, eye, or hair color. Her dental records are available and her DNA profile is pending. No clothing or personal effects were found at the crime scene. The remains were discovered in Two Mile Canyon near the city of Mallet in Oneida County, Idaho by hunters. According to local accounts, this is a fairly rural area. Authorities believe that this case may be related to two other unsolved cases in the area of Tina Anderson, age 12, and Patricia Campbell, age 15, who both disappeared on July 23, 1978, from Alameda Park in Pocatello, Idaho, during the Pioneer Days celebration. In 1981, the girls' remains were discovered close to this crime scene. However, both girls had been shot to death. Investigators have also stated that there is a possible connection to the murders of Linda Smith and Cindy Bringhurst, both of whom were 14-year-olds from Pocatello, Idaho, whose remains were located on the outskirts of the city. Linda was abducted from her home and murdered in 1981. An exact cause of death has never been determined. Cindy disappeared while babysitting in June of 1983. Her body was recovered in July of that same year. No cause of death is listed. These murders might also be connected to the Lewis Clark Valley murders and abductions. If you have any information about this case, please contact local authorities. If you have any information that can help authorities identify any of the Jane or John Doe's discussed in this video, I urge you to come forward to help their families reclaim them and put them to rest. Thank you for watching.